Okay. All right. Um, we're going to talk about double play feeds from the uh, shortstop to second base, and then we'll flip them around and do it from second base to the shortstop. And that probably won't take up the entire 40 minutes, so whatever we have left, we'll talk about the actual pivot itself as far as we can go and get within the 40 minutes. And then I don't have a flight tomorrow until 8 o'clock, so if you want me, I'll stay as long as you want me to at the end for questions, whatever you want to go from there. Okay, <clears throat> let's talk about... Double play situation, shortstop, the angles are kind of bad here. I, really, I thought we were going to like be out here where we could create a better angle, but we're going to make do with what we have. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about the shortstop feeding the second baseman on a, in a double play situation. So we got basically two feeds. we got the underhand toss, and then we have the ball that we're going to throw. The general rule is, now... Regarding disregarding shifts and how we play more guys over here, at, that would change. Let's just say we're at standard double play depth. Any ball hit to me as a shortstop or towards second is going to be the underhand toss. Okay, now my deal on the underhand toss is I always refer to it as the pinball machine. You've got the pinball machine, and, you, and when you play pinball, you hit the button and you shoot the ball back up to the front of the pinball machine, and you got the flippers here, right? When you got the flipper and you hit the button and you're trying to get the pinball, the ball back up to the top of the machine, can you control that? Can you say, I'm going to hit it over here to get that higher button? No, you cannot. You're trying just to whack it back up there and hope it hits it as it bounces back and forth. Well, in the same instance, in the same regard, you can't, you ready? You can't flip your tosses because... The way it rolls off your hand is going to be different every time. You can't have that flipper. You can't control it. If I'm tossing, if I'm going to feed the second baseman on the double play, where do I want to give him the ball every single time? The chest. Why the chest? It's where he throws from, right? We talked about that in the six Fs. If he's got to reach up for the ball... Or reach down for the ball, what does he have to do before he can throw it? He's got to get it back to the middle. So if I can get him the ball in the middle of his body, he doesn't have to funnel it. He lets the ball travel to the middle of his body as deep as he can catch it. And now all he has to do is what? Take the ball out, break thumbs down, and there's his throw. So it's my job to somehow get him the ball Somewhere in the middle of his body. I'm going to be somewhere between the shoulders, above the waist and neck. I'm going to be somewhere in this little square. Okay? The best consistent way to do that is to make the ball knuckle. You're going to have a stiff wrist, take the flipper out of it, take the pinball machine out of it, and never let your arm go above a straight line. Your arm never goes above a straight line. So if I keep my wrist stiff, it's gonna ball is gonna knuckle, okay? All right, the ball is gonna knuckle. Now, if I take my ball and I have my stiff wrist and the ball is gonna knuckle and now I get momentum behind it. Now, you're gonna hear me say cross your feet and you know that's a big deal for me, I don't cross my feet. I don't cross my feet when I throw the ball because I, I wanna get distance and direction. When you toss a ball, it's okay to cross your feet, not when you throw the ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch this ball, and I'm going to get it out, show, the, show my partner the ball, and as I cross over with my right foot, my arm never goes above a straight line, and I can get that ball to the middle of his body more consistently. So I have a stiff wrist where I make the ball knuckle, and my arm never goes above a straight line. I can get the ball to the middle of his body most every time. And all he has to do is catch it deep, and he's ready to throw. If you see the ball spinning, you know the player has the wrist involved. You want to take the wrist out of it if all possible. Stiff wrist, never arm, never goes above a straight line. Never goes above a straight line. 
And if you do that, all you have to do is walk through it and show your players, if my arm never goes above a straight line, there's always a good chance that ball's going to go right there. Makes your ball more consistent, and it gives him an easier, it makes his job a whole lot easier. Now he's going to catch the ball deep in the middle of his body. Now he's going to take it out, thumbs down, and make his throw to first. Makes his job easier. Once again, it's the principle of less movement, less chance of error. So I don't want my hands, my, my flippers going. No flippers. I want to have everything stiff and my arm in a straight line. Okay? Now we have the throw. Now the throw is a little different than maybe you're used to. I see a lot of younger players, high school, college level players, they want to catch the ball and then they want to step back. Okay, what is the purpose of the step back? Anybody? Open it up. Okay. I understand. If I was playing catch with you and I threw like that, would you say something to me? Probably would. Well, I'm just trying to open up so I can just get the ball, so I can get the ball to you. I don't think you have to do that. Once again, it comes under the theory, less movement, less chance of error. Take out unnecessary movements. There's one thing I can do to eliminate that. When I catch the ground ball, as the ball's coming to me, I'm going to give you some different scenarios. As the ball's coming to me, I want to be square to the ball, correct? This is a different ground ball. Now I want to throw this ball to second. So I, I do have to clear my hips. I'm with you on that one. But once that ball's coming to me, all I'm going to do is I'm going to preset my foot like this. It's open already. Now I'm remaining square to the ground ball. My head's on the ball. Both eyes are on the ball. But what have I done to my hips? I've cleared them, right? So now as I catch it and I funnel the ball and I throw it, I can get it right where I want to go with less movement. Now, look at it this way. When you're taking your lead at first base and you have a base dealer, what do you tell them to do with this foot right here, the right foot? Is it open a tad? Why? His hips are already cleared, right? And now he can cross over and get in a straight line. If they're not, when he crosses over, he's not going anywhere. He's not gaining distance and direction. So what is the difference? There's none. And those of you who have heard me talk so far... We have to deliver the same consistent message. I can get this ball without, I can open my hips by just slightly turning my foot. It's that simple. I'm still in a good, perfect fielding position to catch this ground ball. There's going to be some balls that I have to go to that are not hit right at me that I have to go to over and then catch. As I funnel, what should I do with my left foot? Turn it, open it, and it saves the bounce back. Why am I going to go this way if I want to throw it that way? That's the part I don't understand. If I do my job and I funnel this ball and I open this foot, can you see my hand? Yes, you can. So eliminate, in my opinion, different ways to skin a cat. In my opinion... It's an unnecessary movement. Less movement, less chance of error. So when I field the ball and I have my foot open, I've cleared it. He can see the ball, everything. And the other thing it does, it allows the ball to go uphill. Some people, some of the players that step back, two things happen. They're up. They have a tendency sometimes to throw the ball downhill. And the other thing is, they have a tendency to push the ball, and they get the ball, take the second baseman away from the base. You'll hear me talk a minute. I hate second baseman to go across the bag and throw it. Only in an emergency if it's a bad throw. But once again, why do I want my second baseman doing all that movement? 
Something could go wrong. If I throw the ball to the back of the base, all he has to do is catch it and throw it. Less movement, less chance of error. So once again, my foot's open and I got a little funnel. I'm staying down. That ball goes uphill. You can see it go uphill. I want it to travel from here uphill between his shoulders at his chest to make his job easier. All he has to do now is catch it and throw it. I'll talk about the different pivots in a few minutes. But there's, a, there's, there's not a better pivot, in my opinion, than one all I have to do is catch it and throw it. That's the quickest one, the more efficient one. Less movement, less chance of error. If you go to a big league game and watch people turn double plays, you very see, um, seldom see people go across the base. It's just too much movement. So we teach, we teach the infielders to throw the ball to the back of the base. I'm going to talk about the setup here in a minute. We'll have time to talk about pivots. But that's what I want to do. So as a shortstop, basically, and I'm going to talk about the ball up the middle here at the very end. But basically the one at you or toward second is the underhand. Stiff wrist, make the ball knuckle. That's your coaching point. If the ball doesn't knuckle, you watch your player's wrist. He's got a floppy wrist. And never let your arm travel above a straight line. This also goes to the first baseman pitcher covering. You can use this in everything. The ball should knuckle. Your arm should never go above a straight line. Okay? The ground ball. If you can get it preset, you preset it. If you can't, as you funnel, that's when you, that's when you turn it. Now your hips are open, you're still fundamentally sound on the ground ball, and you throw the ball uphill to the back of the base. Okay? Let's turn it around. Okay, now let's talk about the second baseman. Okay, now you're going to be, now you're the shortstop. Now you're just going to stand back here. We'll talk about feet in a few minutes. The second baseman has three feeds that I like. Three different feeds. Nothing is predetermined. The ball tells the, ball tells the shortstop what feed he's going to get. Now, you've heard all your lives, Trammell, Whitaker, Alamar, Vizcale. You know, these guys have played together so well, all so long, they know what each other's going to do. I'm not, I don't buy it. I can play shortstop and second base with you, and I'm going to give you the theory, and you and I can go out and you can tell me what I'm going to do before I do it, based on how the ball's hit. For instance, I'm the second baseman. Once again, I'm at just regular double play depth. No shifts, no wa uh, weird positioning. If this ball takes me towards second base, it's an automatic stiff wrist arm in a straight line, underhand toss. As soon as you see me go this way, you know what you're going to get. I'm not going to surprise you with anything. I'm going to underhand the ball, stiff wrist, arm in a straight line, and you, that's what you're going to get. The ball that's hit right at me hard, or the one I have to go up toward the line and catch, is the backhand toss. Now this may be the hardest one to teach. But I'm going to give you some bullet points, and it's going to make it easy to teach. Same kind of theory. On your underhand toss from the second baseman, here we go again. We're going to cross over, and we're going to give it to him in a straight line, arm in a straight line. There it is. Okay? We've all done that one. The backhand toss. Almost everything is the same. When I catch the ball... My thumb goes underneath it. My thumb is now underneath the ball. It's not on top of the ball. It's under the ball. Okay, here are your checkpoints. Same thing with the pinball. I don't want any flippers. No flippers. I can't control this. What I'm going to do is keep my wrist stiff where the ball's going to knuckle. There's the knuckle. My wrist is stiff. It knuckles. What's going to take the ball from low to high. I'm getting it there every time. Watch my hand. Watch everybody focus on this hand. What do you see? 
Fingers up. Bingo. You're walking down the street and you say hi. That's your key bullet point on this. Thumb is underneath the ball. Wrist is stiff. You say hi. If you say hi over here, which nobody does, hey, hi. That's where the ball's going. If you say hi, like I'm talking to you, it's going to take the ball from low to high. It's going to take it from all the way to the ground and bring it right up to his chest uphill right for him. So he can see that thing coming, and he goes across the bag and gets it. So it's thumb underneath, stiff wrist, say hi. There it is. Every time. Say hi. I do this at the big league level. D. Gordon says hi the first four or five weeks of spring training. <laughs> why do I have to do that? Because I said you do. That's why. So when I don't have to worry about it anymore. You say hi. Hi. Fingers straight up. Hi. Thumb under the ball, stiff wrist, fingers up. Works every time. Once you give them these two, and they do it, they can do it with their eyes closed. Once the ball's in your glove, close your eyes, they start tossing it there. Then you can tell them to stand on their head. Whatever you want to do, they'll do it, anything you want them to. Because it works. It works. The third feed is the ball that takes the second baseman away from second base. Okay? Now this is the one where a lot of people... Do the half, half turn. I'm not a big half turn guy. If you put the half turn guys in slow motion, this is what you're going to see. Well, first of all, what is the purpose of the half turn? You're trying to be quick, okay? The half turn guys, when they turn halfway, usually 95% of the time, that ball goes up and around. So they're trying to be quick, but because they're not facing their target, they have to lean back and go up. Their arm makes a backward C. If you ever look at it, if you ever stop it, watch it. It's a backwards C. So they think they're being quick. They're actually slowing themselves down. <laughs> so what am I going to do? What's my terminology for footwork? Replace your feet. If you go right to left, left to target. Let's see here. Let me think now. Right to left, left to target. There it is. Quick, short, efficient. What do you call an infielder with slow feet? DH. <laughs> yeah. So you should be able to do that. So you're going to replace your feet. You catch the ball first. Replace your feet. There's your throw. Stop and think about this for a minute. Three things make the double play. Three things. None of the three have to do with either infielder. What three things determine a double play? Anybody? Anybody? Ground ball, how hard it's hit, speed of the runner, here we go, we got them all. Three things that determine the, the double play, direction of the ground ball, speed of the ground ball, speed of the runner. If D. Gordon hits me the ball on a one hop to second base, you ready? One hop. I got a chance to double him up. If D. Gordon hits me a ball where I've got to go three steps over this way and catch it, which I'm going to get to this one in a second, and I have to turn and throw it, it's a pretty good chance I don't turn a double play. It has nothing to do that I'm quick and I gave him a good feed. Speed of the ball. Direction of the ball, speed of the runner. Your job is to handle the ball. Give your partner a good feed. He throws the ball straight to first base. He's out at second, safe at first. I try again. Three things determine a double play. Direction of the ball, speed of the ball, speed of the runners. You're supposed to you just handle the ball. 
handle the ball. <clears throat> so we've got an underhand toss with a straight line, stiff wrist. We have a backhand toss with a stiff wrist, say hi. We have replacing the feet. Ball goes over here. We can still get in the middle of it. Replace your feet. I said three of them. There's really four. The fourth one is the ball that takes me over here and I can't get in front of it. I catch the ball outside my body. This one's inside my body. I turn inside the diamond and I make my throw. This is the one that goes outside my body. Okay? Now, if I can catch this, I've got to scoot up on this one. If I can catch this ball outside my body, what I want to do is I want to line the ball up with my left foot. So if I miss this ball, it's going to hit my left foot. I'm going to catch this ball off my left foot. The reason why is it gives me both eyes on the ball and my shoulders are still square. I'm going to play this ball like this if I can get there in the ideal world. Okay, from there, I'm under control. I catch this ball. I line it up with my left foot. Lining it up with my left foot keeps me from spinning. I don't want to spin because it violates every rule of fielding I just talked about. Why does my glove want to go away from the ball and let the ball keep traveling? Eventually, I'm going to have a what? Blind spot. So if I line the ball up with my left foot and I catch it there, it puts me in a pretty good fielding position. My shoulders are square. My eyes are on the ball. And then as I start to funnel, what do I do with my feet? I replace my feet right to left, left to target. Where does that take me? Right where I want to go. Right where I want to go. The other one is, obviously, I can't line it up with my left foot. It's outside my body, way outside. This is the one i got to stop. Now, on that one, I have to know who the runner at first is. If it's a fast guy, I stop, replace my feet, and take my out at first. If it's a slow guy... I'll, turn to, I'll get the force out and keep the double play in order. So that's something you have to, you'll have to work with your, your players on, knowing the players and runners in your league. So on that one, if you have to move to your left and you can't get in front of it, but you can get your left foot down, you want to line it up to keep your proper fielding fundamentals in form. Your head's square, your, both eyes are on the ball, your shoulders are square. And now as you funnel, you replace your feet, it takes you right back where you want to go to the middle, right to second base. Okay? Questions on any of those? Do some again. Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, I did say I was going to do that one, didn't I? Okay, this ball goes up the middle. Now this is just like the second baseman. It's a backhand toss. Okay, so I'm going up the middle, and I catch this ball here with my momentum. So as soon as I catch it, here goes, thumb goes underneath, stiff wrist, say hi. Here's your backhand toss. Sorry, I did say I was going to do that one. I forgot. Yep. Now I'm going to talk about the pivots here in just a second. I'll talk about what the second baseman does on this one too. Remind me in case I, over, if I go past that one. I'm trying to stay on time here. Okay. We've got about 10 minutes. Do you want to talk about some pivots here real quick? Thank you. You're good. I got it. All right. I'll turn around. This is really my best side, but I'll turn around. <laughs> Second baseman. This is all levels. I don't care how old you are. I call this middle back. Middle back. I'm going to get my left foot in the middle of the base, on the back of the base, not on top of the base, and not in front of the base. Middle back. My right foot is toward the left fielder, not toward the center fielder, not toward the right fielder, not toward the third baseman, and not toward the shortstop. Common mistake, in my opinion, is we tell our middle infielders, our second baseman, to line up with the second baseman. Turn your body or line up with the third baseman and line your body up to whoever has the ball. If you do that, where's your target? It's behind me. First base is over here. There's got to be a way that I can get my head and my shoulders and remain square, same message, and face my third baseman and my shortstop. 
if my foot is on the right center field side, I'm behind. My target's behind me. If my foot is toward the left fielder, so my shoulders are parallel with the third baseline, how can I get square to that guy with the ball or this guy with the ball? Easily. I rotate my hips. This foot can be open if it has to be. Okay, now I've killed two birds with one stone. I'm square to the third baseman. I'm square to the shortstop. And where's my left shoulder facing? To my target. So I've got everything covered in one whack. Less movement, less chance of error. If I'm going to face my guy to make sure I'm square here, my direction is off. But if I go middle back and have my right foot toward the left fielder, parallel, my shoulders are parallel to the third baseline, I can just open my hips up, turn my head to find these guys, and he can be way over here, and I get that toss, look where my shoulder is. It's right to first base. If you have older kids, you get that throw, you want to teach them to throw the ball to the back of the base, you want to catch this ball as deep as you can. As deep as you can. Kids are going to get scared at first. But the ball's going to hit them. So you get a tennis ball. Take the fear off first. Start tossing the ball. Real close. Start tossing the ball. And make them catch the ball as deep as they can. The purpose of catching it deep is why? You've already funneled it for them. You've already funneled the ball. You know, if you reach out, now what do you got to do to throw it? Now you got to bring it back in and then take it back. So I'm going to catch the ball deep. It's the same thing on a cutoff and relay. I'm going to catch it here. I'm, I'm square to the guy. Here comes the throw. I get around it. And as I start to move for my relay throw, I'm going to have my glove right here against my chest. Not out here, against my chest. So when I catch the ball, replace my feet, here's my relay throw. It's the same thing. Remain consistent in our message. So it's middle back. Now the advanced kids, advanced players, all you have to do now is you catch it deep, point your toe to first base, and throw it. Plain catch. When you play catch in the backyard, you point your toe to your target. There's your th so you're playing catch. So you catch it, take your foot off the base, point your toe to first, and throw it. Now, this does two things. It keeps you from injury. You can't really knock guys over anymore. I have metal knees back when you could do it. And I had third baseman and shortstops that didn't take care of me. I have metal knees now. The ball, but you get yourself protection. It used to be that you had to teach. You catch it, throw it, and change sides. Pretty quick, huh? You don't have to hit. <laughs> 66 years old. Watch this again. We'll see it again. Don't blink. Don't blink. <laughs> But you used to have to get out of the way. You don't have to get out of the way anymore. So you're playing catch. Take your foot off the base and throw it. For the lower levels, you catch the ball. What are you going to do with your feet now? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. How about replace your feet? Simple. Now when they get old enough, they don't have to relearn how to turn a double play. The only thing is we're taking the replacer feet out of it. Now you're just going to take your foot off the base and throw it. But he's already learned the proper setup. How to remain square to everybody, but yet have his direction where he wants to throw it. It's all learned. It's all learned at eight. So when he's 16, he doesn't have to relearn anything. So it's called middle back. Now, you got to be careful about putting your hands up like this. Because when the ball comes, you're going to disengage him anyway. So just keep your hands close. Have your fingers maybe toward the guy that has the ball. So when it comes now, you're just going to catch it. Turn it in. There's your whole hand. Find your grip. There's again, hold your whole hand. Here's your whole hand. You turn it in. Find your grip. And there's your play. There's your double play. Jab. Older kids. Replace your feet. Younger kids. Okay, now there's, let's say there's a bad throw. As a coach, never let your players practice bad throws in practice. Don't say, okay, Johnny, throw this one to the back. So let's get so-and-so to work on it. You have them make the good throws. If you want to work on your second baseman, on bad throws, you throw the ball. Don't have the shortstop or third baseman throw it. Don't put any kind of those thoughts in their head. So now you go back and you start throwing balls away from them. Okay, if the ball's between their shoulders, 
That's the one where you just catch it deep, jab, and throw. Now let's talk about the ball that's behind their right shoulder. The ball is behind, it goes behind my right shoulder. Does it matter which foot goes to the ball? It must, or I wouldn't have asked the question. Right? Right. How about it? Here it goes. It might be really easy for a young kid. Here goes the ball. He's going to do this. Okay, now number one, he's not on the base. And number two, where's first base? It's back there. Okay? So once the ball, once the ball is thrown and it's behind his right shoulder, jab step with your right foot, drag your left foot. You want to cross the base. Jab and drag. Now all the weights on this foot, what do I do to throw the ball to first base? Step and throw. Does it for you. Jab and drag. Behind my right shoulder. Jab and drag. Jab and throw. This is a really dangerous one now at the big league level with the instant replay. That's why I get on my guys. You've got to throw the ball to the, in, between, in between their shoulders at the back of the base. You can't miss. You can't miss. That replay is going to catch us. The other one is the one that we probably all grew up doing. The ball is thrown in front of your left shoulder. Does it matter which foot goes first here? As a second baseman, it's always your right foot. Always. Right and drag on this one. If the ball goes in front of my left shoulder, if I go with my left foot first, I don't go anywhere. I still have to reach. This foot comes down, I have to bring it in, then I have to throw it. Too long. If my right foot goes to the ball, I try to catch the ball in the middle of my body. So when my left foot comes down, I'm ready to throw. That takes too much time. I hate that. Also on replay, this replay is really screwed up middle infielders, by the way. If I have to go, if I catch that ball right here, he's safe. That replay is going to catch me every time. But yet, I can't just let the ball go. I got to go get it. It's way over here. I got to go get it. I just hope I can stay there long enough to catch it and have my foot on the base. So that is why for hours, we throw the ball to the back of the base. Back, 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 back. And the way I teach this is I get one ball. I had a third baseman with the, with the Marlins years ago named Mike Lowell who set the record Fewest errors in a season in major leagues. I'm only made five errors. He touched the ball 514 times and made five errors. But he hated me in spring training because I had one ball, and if he didn't throw the ball between the shoulders of the second baseman, we had to reach and go get the ball. He had to chase it and bring it back because we only played with one ball. <laughs> you, know how quick, you know how quick they learn? Good teaching tool. Take one ball out there. Fellas, if we don't play catch right, you got to chase it. By the way, I hate this too. We're playing catch and the kid misses it and the coach goes here. Oh, I hate that. Go get it. Didn't you go get it as a kid? Yes, you did. Go get it. You didn't catch it. Your buddy didn't throw it. Go get it. One ball will really teach guys what to do and how to do it and how to do it correctly. So throw the ball to the back. But if they miss, those are the other pivots that can be used. Younger kids, on those, you just kind of go back and catch it, replace your feet, and throw it. If you get one of those over here, you have go catch it any way you can, replace your feet, and throw it. But those are your options at second base for your pivot. Middle back. With your right foot facing the left fielder. It's got to be toward left field. That keeps you square to whoever has the ball. And it keeps your left shoulder, your direction to first base. Okay? Okay, I'm out of time. I'm going to keep going. If you got to go, you go. You're not going to hurt my feelings at all. I've had people get up and walk on me all the time. Short stop. Let's do the short stop. Ground ball to second, ground ball to first. Let me ask you a question. Let's say that I'm going to teach a guy that's played shortstop how to play second base, and I'm going to teach a guy that's played second base all his life how to play shortstop. 
Which one's easier? Is it easier from this guy to go over there? Or is it easier from this guy to go over here? Short ball, shortstop to second? How many say shortstop to second? How about second to short? How about you don't know? There's a bunch of hands <laughs> in the air. My opinion. I'm going to give you my opinion. I think it makes perfectly good sense too, by the way. <laughs> everything the shortstop does, everything is in front of him. Everything. Everything the shortstop does is in front of him. 75% of what the second baseman does goes away from where he wants to end up. Double play feeds, going to turn a double play, which is a majority of all the plays. He's got to go this way before he goes that way. Most people think, well, it's a shorter throw. Maybe. Maybe. But you got to remember, this guy has everything has always in front of him. Everything. I'm not a big arm strength guy. I think you can play shortstop with, a, with an average arm if, you're, if your feet if your feet work. Don't you throw with your feet? Throw with your feet. If your feet work, you can play shortstop. Okay, double plays from the shortstop. Ground ball to second or a ground ball to first. The first baseman's playing behind. There was a runner's on first and second. So the first baseman's back, ground ball to second. Shortstop, ground ball to second. Which corner does he go to? Does he go to this one or does he go to this one? Neither? <laughs> one of them. <laughs> okay. How about this one? Yays. How about this one? Yays. How many people were in the first base thing this morning? Okay, you know where I'm going with this one? Where's my glove? It's over here. The corner opposite from my glove for a shortstop. What's the easiest one to catch? This one. What if he doesn't throw it where he should throw it? And it goes over here, and I'm way over here. I'm not playing catch anymore. I'm playing fetch. Now I'm going to chase the ball. So the shortstop goes to the corner farthest from his glove. As soon as I see my throw or my toss, wherever it goes, my left foot goes to the ball. If it's a perfect throw, my left foot goes to the ball. I catch it deep. Now what do I do with my feet? I replace my feet. Where does that take me? Right to left, left to target, takes me right to first base. What if I get a less than perfect throw and it goes over here? Now what do I do with my feet? I get it back to the middle. I funnel it. Watch my feet. Replace them. Takes me right back where I want to go. So now I'm going to draw a line. Remember we drew the line with the first baseman? Now I'm going to draw a line with my right shoulder. My right shoulder out. Out. Any ball that goes from my right shoulder out, my left foot goes first. And then I replace my feet. Any ball that goes my right shoulder out inside my right shoulder, inside, I've got to catch that one too. So what foot goes first? Left? How many say left? How many say right? So like five total hands and how many people are in here? Okay. All right. Okay. It's the right foot. Right foot goes first. The right foot goes first because I want to remain open and square to the field. So he throws that ball and it goes, in, it goes inside my right shoulder. I see it. Immediately I go catch it. Now how in the world am I going to get back to first base? My left foot goes to my target. It goes right across the top of the base and there's my throw. So I draw that line on my right shoulder. Out, left foot. In, right foot. I drag my left foot across as it goes to first base. I make my double play. It's the same thing. Am I done? Okay. Tell me just shut up. Okay. How about from the pitcher? 
We don't talk about double place in the picture very often. What corner do I go to? Same formula. Farthest from my glove. So I'm going to go to this corner. Right? I'm going to go to that corner from the pitcher. If he throws the ball, well, so first base is this way now, right? You're the pitcher right here. So if he throws the ball from my right shoulder this way, my right foot goes to the ball, my left foot goes to the ball, replace my feet, there's my double play. What if he throws the ball behind me? Now what do I do? Left foot goes to the ball, comes across, and there's my pivot. Basically the same thing. Okay, now, one more. Like I said, if you got to go, you don't, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Last one. Runners, runner on first, and the first baseman's holding runner on. Ground ball hit the second. What corner am I going to? Farthest in the glove. I thought I was going to trick somebody. Yeah, this one, right? Ball comes off. First baseman comes off. The ball's hit to him. What corner do I go to? Farthest from my glove. I'm going to get right here. He knows to throw that ball inside the diamond. He knows that. That's what he's supposed to do. Away. He's not supposed to cross the runner. So when he throws that ball inside, what foot goes first? My right one, right? My right foot goes to the ball. How do I get back to first? Drags right across. There's my pivot. What if he throws the ball and it crosses the runner and it goes over here? Which foot goes to the ball? My left goes to the ball. Oh, shoot, now I'm not even close to the base. What do I do now? Funnel and do it with my feet. Don't say drag. Replace my feet. It's going to take me right where I'm going to go. Bingo. That's it. That's the pivots. Okay. Mm. 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 You're welcome. Sure. Yeah.